What's up, guys? It's Ben from My Sports Stop uh, here with Richie Donnell. Uh, today, we are going to do our top 10 uh, tight end prospects of the 2017 NFL Draft. Yep. Tight end is probably the, the fastest changing position yeah. in football. Right. Uh, and it really shows with this list. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, with the tight end position, you're getting away from those guys who... Uh, kind of protect the edge and set the edge for the run. Uh, we're getting to more athletic guys, maybe yeah. some guys that are even converted wide receivers that are just a little bit bigger that might not have the speed for the NFL on the outside. And, and they're just moving them inside and creating mismatches with linebackers and safeties because of how big and fast that they still are. And at number 10, you yes. have uh, a former wide receiver yes. uh, from Division II Shepherd, Billy Brown. Yeah, I think this guy is going to be uh, one of the most talked about guys during the later part of the draft, um, maybe day three. Um, he's a wide receiver who scored 32 touchdowns over the last two seasons at the Division II level. Okay. Um, I believe that led all NCAA. He had 22 this past season alone. Um, he's going to move inside because of his size at 240 pounds. Um, but he, he's going to be a complete mismatch and a complete nightmare to try to cover at the next level um, just because he has that ability to run routes, being a wide receiver on the outside. Uh, he, he's going to be similar to, to somebody like, like Julius Thomas, okay. who just seemed to be a little bit more athletic uh, than everybody else on the field. And Brown was um, obviously a huge mismatch for the cornerbacks trying right. to cover him. No, I, absolutely. Uh, now at number nine uh, from Arkansas, yes. Arkansas had a big tight end Hunter Henry last year. Right. Uh, now Jeremy Sprinkle. Right, Sprinkle, Sprinkle's not quite on that same level as Hunter Henry. Um, he, he's a big dude, though. Uh, he's six feet, six foot six, which is just massive right. to try to cover because there's not many people that are are that size. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to try to cover him down the field, I don't think he's going to be the explosive weapon that Henry was to compare him to somebody that was in the same college system. Uh, but he's going to be a guy who, who's just going to eat you up uh, in the middle of the field, maybe some shorter routes, yeah. uh, as more of a dink and dunk kind of guy. He's also a pretty good blocker. Yes. So that, that helps. Number eight, um, another receiving tight end, uh, Evan Engram yes. from Ole Miss. Yeah, Engram's the kind of guy, he, he's the guy that fell. Um, last year, going into his junior season, he was he was highly talked about. Uh, him and Henry were kind of fighting for that one and two spot, but then he decided to come back to school. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, that has hurt him. Um, he's not as big as the other guys on this list. He's only 225 pounds, which is small for a tight end these days. But but he's a great receiver. He's a great explosive threat. Uh, he's still big at 6'3", and, and he comes from a system where they used him like that. Uh, he, he's ultimately just a big receiver. Kind of reminds you if, if Alshon Jeffrey was kind of a tight end. Okay. Um, maybe something similar yeah, to that. Yeah, I see that. Um, so number <laughs> seven... Gerald Everett from yes. South Alabama. Not a lot of people get the opportunity to watch South Alabama, but this guy's just an absolute stud. He's been their best player in that program for the last couple of years, um, not just the best at his position. Uh, he's kind of the face of that organization at this point, mm -hmm. um, but he, he's got all the good numbers. I mean, 700 yards receiving uh, just speaks for itself for a tight end position, especially at the college level, because you usually don't hear about tight ends uh, getting that much mm -hmm. attention uh, from in yeah. offenses at that level. Yeah, Gerald Everett, guy to keep on your radar. Uh, now at number six, uh, YouTube commenters, get ready. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> David Njoku from Miami. Why yeah. so low? Uh, the reason I have him so low is because I think his athletic ability is a little bit farther along than his natural football gift ability. Okay. Now, when I say that, that's not necessarily uh, just a, a downgrade for that reason because uh, when you look at comparisons, you look at somebody maybe like a Jimmy Graham whose athletic ability was so far above his playing ability mm -hmm. that he – it had to catch up. And, and obviously now Jimmy Graham is one of the best receiving tight ends in the NFL, but he wasn't that from day one when right. he got drafted. And, and that's what this projection shows. Okay. Um, he, he has a, the chance to be an impact player, but his, his football IQ and his ability just have to catch up to uh, – the athletic ability. And a guy that's being talked about in the first round. Right. Uh, number five, uh, you have Jordan Leggett from Clemson. Yes, just just a good all-around football yeah. player. Um, middle of the pack kind of guy, just goes out and handles his business. Um, that's kind of, mm -hmm. I mean, what what describes him. He's the guy that goes out and works hard. He's not going to be super athletic compared to anybody else. He's not super fast. He's not, you know, super tall. Nothing that really sets him apart, but he just goes out and he gets it done. Um, just, like I said, a good football player overall. And from a winning organization, too. Yes. Uh, now, number four, maybe a little bit surprised here, yeah. Cole Hikatini from Louisville. Right. Uh, I got to see him play on TV quite a bit, um, you know, and, and just being able to watch him play shocked me. I, I had no idea who he was at the beginning of the year, 
And if he was able to play with a quarterback like a Deshaun Watson or a Mitch Trubisky, somebody uh, a little bit of a passer uh, than what they have at Louisville, I think he we'd be talking about him as possibly a top three tight end in this draft, maybe even top two. He's just a really good receiver. He creates good separation. And I think he's going to be one of those guys that a lot of people overlook. And, and when he gets drafted, they're going to be like, really? Him? Why? How, how that high? And, and he's going to go in and he's going to surprise a lot of people. Okay. Uh, now number three, um, a vertical threat at yes. the tight end position, Bucky Hodges. Yeah, he's a, he's a monster. Um, he, he's huge, a huge, huge individual. Uh, this is where you're going to see somebody like Eric Ebron, similar style. Okay. Um, where he can get outside and he can run routes on the outside and with his height create that separation on a smaller linebacker or defensive back. But he's also not scared to go across the middle. Um, he's he's going to catch touchdowns. He's a tough Hard-nosed guy um, that's just going to fit that mold. Maybe uh, for some of the older guys, Jeremy Shockey, mm. when, when he was in the NFL, just that hard, gritty tight end that, yeah. that just loves the physicality of the game and isn't scared of really anything. Okay. Uh, now number two, uh, a guy that got hurt in December yes. towards ACL, right. but still very highly rated, Jake Butt from Michigan. Yeah, the reason Jake Butt, I still have him at number two is because I gave him this grade. Uh, even though he had the torn ACL, if he's 100% healthy, he's the number two tight end in this class. Right. So my anticipation here is that he's going to come back 100% healthy and get back to what he was beforehand. Okay. Uh, when, when he's healthy, he, he's one of the best, if not the best, tight end uh, in the country. Just a big guy, catches the ball well, runs across the middle, can run away from you. All right, and now at number one, maybe not the consensus number one tight end, but you and I both agree on this, right. O.J. Howard from Alabama. Yeah, O.J. Howard from Alabama, like you said, winning program. Um, it's one of those things where he shows up in big games. Yeah. Um, he, he was highly recruited. A lot of people talked about him said, where's O.J. Howard, where's O.J. Howard, where's O.J. Howard? And last year's National Championship game, uh, the one when they beat Clemson, was a huge breakout game for him. Decided to come back to school and capitalize on that in a big way. Uh, showed his ability to get down the field. Showed his ability to be a consistent pass catcher. Uh, this is, I think, just kind of puts him in that number one spot, and, and he's going to be the first one gone. I agree. Uh, now, let's take a look at my top ten. Like I said, uh, Howard, number one. I have Njoku at number two. Um, Jake Butt slid a little bit for me yep. uh, because of the injury, but again, if he wasn't hurt, uh, he'd probably be at my number two as well. Um, one guy you don't have your, on your list, Adam Shaheen uh, from Ashland, um, 277 pounds. Yep. And he has incredible acceleration. I can't wait to see this guy in the combine because yep. that's where he's going to be recognized yep. uh, by the GMs and the scouts. And um, yeah, people are going to be talking about him on TV. And also at number nine, uh, Eric Sobert from Drake. Um, if you're a little worried about Jake Butt's injury, um, draft this guy. He's kind of a discount version. Yep. Uh, I could see him being a value pick uh, in the middle rounds. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to go on mysportstop.com uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more original videos.